Welcome to Jamaica Worldwide and today we are looking at 10 child stars of Jamaica's popular music. Reggae and dancehall were a means to escape poverty in Jamaica and as such many have tried their best to enter the Jamaican music industry with hopes of a better life. Some were successful, some were not. For some, getting recognized for their talent and music took some time. But for those who were undeniably talented, they attained stardom at a very young age. These are 10 of the most notable acts that made a name for themselves while quite young and went on to become legends in the reggae and dancehall industry. Well, somehow I think my style is a very unique one wherein I always try and improvise. Stick around to find out which artist is the youngest in Jamaican history to have a hit recording. As we begin, please feel free to hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. You can also hit the notification bell so you can get videos as soon as they are released. Number 10, Billy Boyo. Billy Boyo is the most prolific of the young DJs who would be around the sound systems in the 80s toasting. His most well-known contribution to Jamaican music is Once Before Day, which was featured in DJ Khaled's Holy Mountain single in 2019. He had two fairly successful albums, but suffers a curse of not being very successful as a recording artist. This was not totally detrimental for him, as he was known more for his talents as a live MC. Billy Boyer was still in his teens when he rose in popularity in 1983. Legendary producer Henry John Jolaz was instrumental in his charting in 1982 with the song Wicked She Wicked produced by Laws. This hit had the added charm of a 13 year old child's voice on the microphone chanting about a wicked girl. This would be the nature of the fascination with Billy Boyo as he would DJ about seemingly mature topics in his very boyish tone. Unfortunately he was not able to translate his talents into a successful recording career when he was an adult. Sadly, Billy Boyo died of a brain tumor on the 29th of October 2000 after struggling for about two months with the ailment. Number 9, Little John. Little John got his stage name due to the fact that he began performing and recording at the age of 9. He originally started recording for Captain Cinebad's Youth in Progress label and released his debut single 51 Storm. It was however when he started recording with Sugar Minot's youth promotion organization that he got his big break and performed with sound systems such as Romantic Hi-Fi, Kilimanjaro, Gemini and Henry John Jolaz's Volcano High Power. He is considered one of Jamaica's first dancehall singers recording for many producers in the 1980s notably for Laws, Joseph Fukim of Channel One, George Pang, Ja Thomas and also King Jamis. Little John continued recording into the 90s including the Winston Holness produced Boombastic in 1990 and in the 21st century released the Bill Backyard album done in 2006. He continues to record and perform live 
including paying a tribute to the late sugar miner at, at Reggae Sum Fest in 2010. Number 8, Junior Tucker. So if you know that you haven't been to the school and you're not familiar with the rules, don't test. When it comes to Jamaican child stars in music, the name that comes to most experienced Jamaicans is Junior Tucker. Junior Tucker was nicknamed the Jamaican Michael Jackson as his tone very nearly resembled that of the pop icon. At seven years old, he had a local hit song, making him the youngest in Jamaican history to do so, besting Dennis Brown, who did so at age 12 with No Man Is An Island, and QQ, who did so at age 10 with Poverty. Tucker's hit song was titled Happy, and it went to number one in Jamaica and most people noticed his vocal resemblance to Michael Jackson's. He went on to have other hit songs, such as a cover version of Some Guys Have All The Luck, but that would pale in comparison to his hit song Don't Test, which earned him a recording contract with Virgin Records in 89. He also had the song Mr. Telephone Man that was covered by American group New Edition. After the death of his father, he was intent on becoming a Christian. He had also been complaining of nightmares and prayed that God would help him to sleep. I was struggling really badly with nightmares. I would go to psychologists, I would go to people for counseling and it wouldn't help. People were even praying for me. I remember one time going for and people laying hands on me and praying. He went on to sing gospel music and also become a pastor. He has also released a few gospel albums and is doing quite well on the gospel scene. Number 7, QQ. Everywhere I go, there's hundreds or more people running. QQ and this and that, when I take pictures, hug me, when I kiss me, all different types of stuff. At 10 years old, QQ became the second youngest person to have a hit song in Jamaica with his song Poverty topping charts and receiving massive airplay across the country. Apart from being an anthem in the dance hall, the song went beyond the shores of Jamaica to chart in countries in Europe and the Caribbean. QQ has been creating quite an impact in reggae and dance hall and followed up his poverty single with Never Know The Use Of Her. Since then, he has charted with some dance songs such as Stuki and Rum Ram which established him as an undeniable talent and he continues to perform and record. Being an artist, dancehall fans would look forward to a hit every once in a while. Number six, Nadine Sutherland. Because I was always the little girl singing on stage, singing around the community, so I guess I was considered somewhat a little bit precocious. Nadine Sutherland was the first artist to be signed by none other than the great Bob Marley to his Tough Gang label. This was after winning the Tasty Talent Contest besting the likes of Paul Blake aka Frankie Paul and Yellow Man. She was born in the parish of Kingston and raised in Above Rocks in St. Catherine. She began performing in 1979 with her parents managing her career while she studied at St. Andrew High School. She notably recorded the song Starvation on the Land for Tough Gang at the age of 11. She struggled to break through as a solo artist and after touring the US as a support for Bunny Wheeler, she worked as a backing vocalist at Gussie Clark's Music Works studio. She went on to work for Donovan Germain at his Penthouse Studios and Germain produced her 1993 hit Action, a combination with Terror Fabulous and in 2007 was included by Vibe magazine as number 19 on its list of 50 greatest duets of all time. Action had reached number 43 on the Billboard Hot 100. 
Nadine still performs and records to this day. And I remember vividly standing up in the class before I won Taste to the Grand Finals and I was like, um, my name is Nadine and I'm an amateur singer. Number five, Errol Dunkley. Dunkley's recording career began in 1965 when he was just 14 years old. He was born February 6, 1951. He became interested in the music industry and started very early. At 14, he recorded the songs Gypsy, a duet with Roy Shirley, My Queen with Junior English and Love Me Forever on the Rio label. He recorded several singles for Joe Gibbs from 1967 to 68, including Please Stop Your Lying in 1967 and Love Brother before moving on to Cox and Dodd at Studio One in 1969. Like Billy Boyo, it was very interesting hearing the very mature content in songs such as You're Gonna Need Me. When I was like 13, 14, 15, going on 16, I had a ton load of hit songs. That's when Jamaica people start recognizing Errol Dunkley. Number four, Ken Booth. Born Kenneth George Booth on March 22nd, 1948 in Denham Town, Kingston. He actually attended the Denham Town Primary School and during this time developed an interest in music and got encouragement from his sister Hyacinth Clover who was also an established vocalist. Stranger Cole, another established artist, was actually a neighbor to Ken and Stranger Cole actually assisted him in getting some form of recognition. Cole was recording for Island Records and he brought Ken with him to record the track Una Dos Stress and this was placed on the B-side of his own single Last Love for said Island Records. They naturally formed a group Stranger and Ken which would become popular over some time. Ken would also form another group with Roy Shirley called Roy and Ken which would release the single Paradise in 1966. He would move on to record for Clement Cox and Dodd for Studio One where he got almost immediate success from the single The Train Is Coming. Fun fact is that he was actually backed by the Whalers on this track. Ken is known for his distinctive sound and style. He achieved an international reputation as one of Jamaica's finest vocalists through a series of crossover hits that appealed to both reggae fans and the mainstream audience. He also got massive success with his version of Everything I Own. Ken performs still to this day and was awarded the Order of Distinction for his contribution to reggae music by the Jamaican government. Number 3, Beanie Man. Moses Anthony Davis, better known as Beanie Man, was born in 1973 in Kingston, specifically to the community of Waterhouse. This Jamaican dancehall DJ started toasting at the age of 5 years old. His uncle, who was a drummer for Jimmy Cliff, encouraged him to pursue music in a serious way. He won the Tasty Talent Contest in 1981 and Barry G, who is a local radio DJ, took it upon himself to introduce him to sound system operators around Kingston. This helped to establish him as a DJ in dancehall circles. His initial stage name was spelled B E A N Y, but was eventually changed to the present spelling very early on in his career. He went on to release his first studio single called Too Fancy. He would work with other producers such as Bonnie Lee and Sly and Robbie in his formative years. Over the years, Beanman has amassed a slew of hit records. I can't even begin to start naming out. As a matter of fact, just name your favorite Beanman song in the comments. In 1984, Beanman had recorded some material with Barrington Levy, 
but his music career was put on hold while he finished school and spent time traveling abroad. This music with Barrington Devi was released 10 years later. Beanieman remains today a stalwart in dancehall and received a Grammy for his album Art and Life in 2001. Number 2 Delroy Wilson Delroy Wilson was only 13 years of age when he started recording music while still a student at the Boys Town Primary School Wilson released Emmy Lou, his first single in 1962 for record producer Clement Coxendad of Studio One. He had several hits from the Studio One, including Joe Likes, which was kind of a clash tune against Prince Buster, who was formerly an employee to Studio One. This song was written by Lee Scratch Perry, and it was followed by another song Perry wrote called Spit in the Sky, which was also targeted at Prince Buster. Delroy Wilson is the first child star and as Jamaica transitioned into the Rocksteady era, he amassed quite a few hits including Feel Good All Over, I Am Not A King, True Believer In Love, Rain From The Skies. His influences include some prominent American singers. I used to listen like Marvin Gaye, you know, Stevie Wonder, like Lou Rawls, you know. So, you know, by listening to them, I try to put everything together, you know. My own kind well, of let's hear something. Singing, you know? Unfortunately, Delroy Wilson also passed at a relatively young age on March 6, 1995 at the age of 46 years old at the UA hospital. He is said to have died of complications from cirrhosis of the liver. In 2013, he was posthumously awarded the Order of Distinction by the Jamaican government. Before we get to number one, please go ahead and like the video also subscribe to the channel you can also hit the notification bell to get notification of videos as soon as they are released please also feel free to check out our patreon we now have a patreon page for those who wish to support the channel it would be very much appreciated number one dennis brown The Crown Prince of Reggae, Dennis Brown, was born on February 1st, 1957 at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in Kingston, Jamaica. His father, Arthur, was a popular scriptwriter, actor and journalist. Dennis Brown would affectionately call his father King Arthur and credits him as the person who inspired him to want to be on stage. Arthur Brown provided comic relief to Jamaicans for decades as one of the island's top comedians. Along with Biman Bam and Ronnie Williams, they set the tone for Jamaican roots presentations continued by actors like Glenn Campbell and Oliver Samuels. This would explain Dennis's fascination with the stage and him starting entertainment at a very early age. Dennis Brown grew up in a large tenement yard between North Street and King Street in Kingston with his parents, three elder brothers and a sister, although his mother died in the 1960s. He began his singing career at the age of nine while still at junior school. His first performance on stage and in public would be an end of term concert held at the school. As a youngster, he was a keen fan of American balladeers such as Brooke Benton, Sam Cooke and Frank Sinatra. He cited Nat King Cole as one of his greatest earlier influences. As a youngster, he would hang around JJ's recording store on Orange Street in the Rocksteady era and his relatives and neighbors would often throw him money to hear him sing in the yard. But his first professional appearance would come at the age of 11 when he visited Tit for Tat, a local West Kingston nightclub where his brother Basil Brown was performing a comedy routine 
and where he had made a guest appearance with the club's resident group, the Fabulous Falcons. His performance was so impressive that he was asked to join the group as a featured vocalist. This would set off a chain of events that led to his eventual notoriety. The group performed at a JLP conference at the National Arena. Brown sang two songs, Desmond Decker's Unity and Johnny Taylor's Ain't That Loving You. And after the audience showered the stage with money, no pun intended, he was able to buy his first suit with the proceeds. Byron Lee of Byron Lee and the Dragoneers performed on the same bill and was so impressed with Brown, he booked him to perform on package shows featuring visiting US artists where he was billed as Boy Wonder. As a young singer, Brown was influenced by older contemporaries such as Delroy Wilson whom he later cited as the single greatest influence on his style of singing. Errol Dunkley, John Holt, Ken Booth and Bob Andy. Brown's first recording was an original song called Lips of Wine for Derek Harriot, but it was not released and he went on to record the same song for Clement Coxendad on the Studio One label. This was a common practice for Dennis so there was more than one version of a few of his songs. Brown recorded quite a few sessions for Dud, which amounted to about 30 songs and he also worked as backup singer on sessions by other artists like Horace Andy, Larry Marshall and Alton Ellis. Brown is arguably one of the most influential vocalists and recording artists in Jamaican history. Dennis Brown promoted reggae music throughout the world with hit records and sold out concert tours in almost every continent. Throughout the 1970s to the late 90s, he influenced and mentored many new and upcoming artists. Richie Stevens, Luciano Jr. Reed, Barrington Levy, to name a few. In addition to being a hard worker with over 78 albums, he was a soulful singer and talented songwriter who played the guitar and the drums. He contributed to reggae in an immense way. Brown sadly passed at the University Hospital of the West Indies on July 1, 1999 and he still is considered today reggae royalty. Is there anyone you feel should be on this list? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and share this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. This is Jamaica Worldwide.